Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt down here in the catacombs where it seems we all belong these days as Christians. The wheels have come off America, the moral America that we all knew when we were children. I'm not going to spend too much time going over the minutia of the Michael Sam affair, Michael Sam being the first NFL football player to be drafted by the St. Louis Rams. St. Louis Rams are the team that, that picked up Michael Sam, who's an open homosexual. There's been some blowback, very, very little, from other NFL players. Twitter has Derek Ward, for example, the former Super Bowl champion, saying, I am sorry, but Michael Sam is no bueno for doing that on national TV. Man, you got kids looking up at the draft. I can't believe ESPN even allowed that to happen, end quote. Ward, who played for the New York Giants and the Houston Texans, says he has now received death threats against him and his children, for making this particular statement of the obvious. Miami Dolphins safety Don Jones also expressed some opposition to this now famous or infamous kiss between Michael Sam and his boyfriend at the news that he had been drafted by the, the uh, St. Louis Rams. Uh, and he wrote also on Twitter, horrible OMG after the kiss was aired. For that, for that offense, uh, he was fined by his club. He's not allowed to attend team functions and has to attend, he has to attend sensitivity training for saying, oh my gosh, horrible at the sight of two men kissing on ESPN. In response to their players' reaction, the uh, Miami Dolphins issued a statement that included the following. We met with Don today about respect, discrimination, and judgment. These comments are not consistent with the values and standards of our program. Others, including Robbie Schultz, said, quote, on Twitter, It's annoying that people can't say anything about the Michael Sam kiss without people pointing at them saying homophobe. Good statement, however, Robbie's Twitter page no longer exists. So make of that what you will. Now this is, this is all interesting. The, the, the problem is, We've been so dumbed down that we don't realize, although this all seems new to us, especially Americans, we haven't cracked many nonfiction books since high school, certainly not any history books. It seems all very new to us and progressive and wild and exciting. Wow, you know, two men uh, proclaiming their love uh, on national TV. Isn't that terrific? What they don't realize is that there is nothing new here. There's nothing progressive about it. Every civilization in history has become sexually confused just before it fell. Rome, Greece, and now America. And just the fact that we're pointing to this as indicative of a problem in our civilization, we here at Remnant TV, the Remnant Underground, will be called, of course, homophobes for being concerned. Fine. Or homophobes, whatever that means. In fact, we're not homophobes. We don't hate anyone. And I think it's important to understand that even those who are to be castigated as homophobes for being concerned about what's happening culturally have as the basis for that quote-unquote homophobia a long history of civilizations having a problem with this sort of cultural development. Now, what am I talking about? The Jewish religion certainly did not accept homosexuality, and we have in their dusty old books thousands of years ago statements against homosexuality. The Christian religion in the Bible itself, now 2,000 years old, also for a couple of thousand years, the Catholic Church had the prohibitions of the homosexual act. Even as late as 1972, the American Psychiatric Association had listed homosexuality as a mental illness. Now everyone who's watching this broadcast has a mother or a grandmother, a father or a grandfather, who would have agreed. Now, I'm not even making a statement on what I think or what is the reality of this, of this thing, of homosexuality. I'm just pointing out that there's a long legacy of civilizations that had a problem with homosexuality. Churches, religions, 
that had a problem and have a problem with homosexuality. When I was a child, every state in the Union had anti-sodomy laws, we'll recall. And all the Christians taught, Christian churches taught that it was a sin. The Bible classifies it as a sin that cries to heaven for vengeance. But we're homophobes. We're the ones with the problems with this. Because we are an enlightened and progressive society, we now know that there's nothing amiss with the misuse of the sexual function, heterosexually or homosexual, homosexually, as we see, we see going on everywhere today in society. Our society is enlightened. We, we know the truth. Our enlightened society, which is at war constantly all around the world, which is bombing children and civilian targets, which is sending out drone strikes against people we don't like or we disagree with, creating mayhem all around the world. People are starving to death in our streets. Our cities are torn apart by crime. Our children are murdering each other in the classrooms. Our families are broken. More, more marriages end in divorce than ever before in human history. The family, the home is broken. Millions of babies are aborted. Nevertheless, we know better. We're the ones with the great moral compass that get to say that progressivism, liberalism, advancement, evolution is the reason we can look at things like immorality, whether it's homosexual or heterosexual, rampant, and say that's progress. That's a good thing. We know better. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Sam is not the problem. Michael Sam is a consequence. He's collateral damage for the war that's been declared against God and against his church. It makes no sense for us to be overly upset or concerned about Michael Sam and his boyfriend. Traditional Catholics have been for 50 years decrying the fact that the only moral authority left in the world, the Holy Catholic Church, has declared war on herself. Michael Sam and everything that's happening at ESPN and in the media with respect to this incident with this NFL player was inevitable. There's no reason any of us should be surprised. And if we are surprised, if we are shocked by what's happening in the NFL and in culture in general, then we've not, understand, we've not understood what it means to be a traditional Catholic to begin with. Because it never was about liturgical preferences. It was about the restoration of the only moral authority the world has ever recognized, the Catholic Church. It's about the proclamation of the kingship of Christ. And when we turn against God, when we turn against natural law, when we turn against the Catholic Church, all you can expect is cultural mayhem. You can't vote this down. You can't lay claim to your religious liberty to try to do something about the fact that now when our children turn on the TV set, they're apt to see a couple of men kissing each other uh, in the course of pursuing an NFL football career. It's all over. Now, Michael Sam's not persecuted. Michael Sam isn't downtrodden. He's a hero. He's hailed by the media. The President of the United States has given him accolades for his bravery in coming out. I don't see a persecuted or downtrodden person. I don't see the equivalent to blacks in the South not being allowed to vote not being allowed to use the same drinking fountain as white people, not being allowed to watch the same movies and the same seats of theaters as white people. That's an atrocity. How we have equated homosexuality with the plight of black people is, is luciferianly ridiculous. I don't know how, we, how we've come to this point, but it's grossly unfair to the black people who are black brothers who suffered as they did during 
for, for 100 years in this country. And yet that's what's happened. Those of us who have an objection to the demonstration of immorality, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, on TV, on programs geared towards little children, all that's missing, as far as the media are concerned, are the white hoods. We are the new Ku Klux Klansmen. We are the haters for going along with thousands of years worth of moral teaching and ideas about what it means to be a society that is in line or in some respect acknowledging God's will in our lives. So we can't vote this down. We've lost. There's nothing we can do to change this. This is media-driven, culturally driven. The Catholic Church has stepped aside. What did Cardinal Dolan say when Michael Sam announced his, his homosexuality, when he came out? Bravo, said Cardinal Dolan. Good for him. In a nutshell, that's the problem. The Catholic Church is no longer speaking. She's no longer teaching. She's no longer a moral voice. So to blame Michael Sam for this is ridiculous. Michael Sam didn't invade our country from the far-flung planet of homosexualia. Michael Sam is our brother. He's the kid we grew up with. He's the kid that our society abandoned since he was this tall. Everyone in his life has been telling him to do whatever he wants give in to whatever impulse comes his way. Whether it's teacher, rabbi, minister, priest, or broken home parents, no one's ever told him anything. As traditional Catholics, the knock against us is that we are all about securing our liturgical preferences. Nothing could be further from the truth. What we are talking about is restoring the Catholic Church's moral authority, Holy Mother Church, to have a voice in society again. Now, Pius XI in Mortalium Animos, way back in the 1920s, was speaking out against something like classroom sex education. Why? Because that is the parent's job to teach what the purpose and point of the marital privilege is. That's all gone now, even in the Catholic Church. Theology of the body and all of these things that are going into an area of human sexuality that had never been before heard of in the history of the church. And so all of a sudden, the idea that marriage is for the point and purpose of procreation and education of children is now gone. It's an antiquated idea. And, and what's happening now with the Michael Sams and the ESPNs of the world is the chickens are coming home to roost. That's all it is. So what's the answer? It's not an easy answer. There is no way that we can, we can you know, raise some sort of uh, you know, democratic voice to stop this. this. It's beyond that. Now, we're down here in the catacombs for a reason, literally and figuratively. That's where Christians are going to be because now it's God's time. God's going to have to intervene. But we have to recognize that our role in all of this is to keep the old faith and to realize and to make plain to all of those who we can possibly influence that the restoration of the Catholic Church is the answer. That's it. That's all it is. We have to go back to lobbying for the rights of God and for the duties of citizens before that, before God, before Christ the King. What are our duties with respect to serving God? And as a society, we've lost that. The restoration of the Church is the answer. Simple as that. It's a divine solution. It's not a democratic solution. It's not going to entail voting or, or boycotts or petition drives. It's going to entail keeping the faith despite everything that's happening topside, everything that's happening in the streets of America and Europe and around the whole world. Because ultimately now, once we abandon this idea that we can fix it through the democratic process or that we can fix it through laying claim to our rights of religious liberty and so forth, once it's obvious that we cannot then we will turn to God, and then we will go back to acknowledging what the point and purpose of our existence is to begin with, to know, love, and serve God. That's all this is. Everything that we're seeing culturally, socially, politically, 
is a rejection of that idea that the point and purpose of life is to know, love, and serve God. Is it lampoonable? Sure it is. But that's the truth. That's where we are. So keep the faith. That's the answer. That's the answer. It's not to lash out against these poor victims of the auto-destruction of the Catholic Church, these victims such as Michael Sam. I don't know what's going to happen to Michael Sam. We pray for him, but he's not the problem. The Catholic Church's auto-destruction is the problem. So fight on, continue to keep the old faith, and pray that we will never forget what the America and the church that we knew as children, what it was all about. Don't forget, never, ever forget what it was. Never lose hope that it can be restored once again. But it can only be restored by men returning to some sense of obligation to Almighty God. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.